what's going on? We got an awesome guest today, one of my friends. We probably met 12, 15 years ago, I think. On Tinder. Yeah, on Tinder. <laughs> on ArabianMatch.com. Oh! <laughs> and, uh, I remember uh, Chris Bell introducing me to you at Gold's, and I had just broke a world record. And they said, this is the strongest guy we got at Gold's Gym. And I saw you, and I was like, he's a big mother I was thinking, I wonder how strong he really is, though. And I didn't know. I saw you posting stuff over the next five, six years. Well, finally, last year, I get to go to Gold's Gym, and I get to work out with you, and I'm going to test your fake weights, right? Exactly. And those weights weren't <laughs> fake. You <laughs> held right in there with me. We were doing inclines, and you were doing sets, I think, of three with 405, and I was just doing fives. Uh, but I held I weighed you by 50 pounds, and you were already getting leaner. And I was like, this is the most impressive thing I've ever seen. You've stayed lean almost your whole career, and your strength is impeccable, and you just smoked my ass on reps. You know, and I'm a venture. So it's, it's just impressive. Thanks, brother. Thank you, man. see all that, you know. So give us some background. Where did you grow up? Uh, I grew up in Washington, uh, Kirkland, Washington. So Costco, Bill Gates, Michael Hearn. Yep. Not in that order. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Washington State boy. Uh, started young. Things that I just found out today. Um, my first powerlifting meet uh, was at 13 years old. Yep, same as me. Same as you. We, uh, I graduated high school at 272 pounds. Same as me. <laughs> so uh, that kind of stuff is cool, man. It's, it's a, insane. We, we started young. We started doing this. Uh, you know, honestly, I'm, I'm the same weight I was when I was in high school. So yeah. one of those things is uh, <clears throat> I, I'm not as strong as you. I, I'm not the strongest guy in the world. I'm not the uh, most ripped bodybuilder in the world. But I am, I think today, uh, the most consistent yeah. In 35 years, I've uh, yeah. been able to squat over 600 pounds for 35 years straight. Mm -hmm. And what I like about you is consistency. When I think Michael Hearn, I think consistency. You're consistently lean. You're consistently strong. You're consistently working your ass off, and you're consistently never hurt. That is the four big things when I think of Michael Hearn. That's what I think of, and I think you personally don't get enough credit for it. Oh, well, you know? hey, you know what? It, it's one of those things. It's... Uh, when people like you or Ed Cohen or Stan Everton or anybody like that at, at, at such an elite level, even MMA fighters like Josh Barnett and, and uh, Rumble Johnson talk about me and they say things like that. I'm okay with the most elite people in the world saying that kind of stuff, even though it's not the millions. Because you know what? Being the best in the world at one thing lasts about this long, unless you're Ed Cohen, right? Yeah. You can be the best bodybuilder in the world. And, you know, there's kids that are going to go to the Arnold Classic right now that don't know who Ronnie Coleman is. Yeah. It's that fast, and what I think when I think of you is consistency of hard work, and all the other things that we mentioned. So tell us a little bit about how you how do you stay injury free? I, I talk a lot about it with powerlifting, but how do you do it? Uh, well, there's a couple different things. I, I I never wanted. Obviously, I'm a connective tissue guy. I I believe in connective tissue over anything else. I believe in bone density over anything else. Um, like you, we we were strong, strong kids. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wanted to bodybuild, uh, and I was competing by 13, 14 years old in bodybuilding shows too. Um, but by the time I was 20, still injury free and all that, uh, I was starting to shoot uh, cover stories for Muscle and Fitness. Mm -hmm. And the one thing, uh, Joe Weider, which yeah. means more to me, Joe Weider and uh, Robert Kennedy both uh, put me on their tw 12 greatest bodies of all time. Awesome. And I'm like, holy shnikes. And he said, uh, I was at a photo shoot, and Joe Weider goes, and at this photo shoot with some other uh, pros, that uh, some guys who were just placing the top five at the Olympia. Yeah. And he said to me, don't change. Yeah. Perfect how you are. Right. Um, and I was already stronger than all the bodybuilders, you know, at 20 years old mm -hmm. when I first came to California. So, you know, I'm coming from a powerlifting gym and uh, competing at nationals and powerlifting, and so I was still bodybuilding too, and then I come there, and so I'm stronger, so I didn't yeah. need to worry about the strength. Yeah. And then he said, don't worry about changing your body. Mm -hmm. So I was lucky enough not knowing what I was doing. I was making the connective tissue so much stronger than the muscle, mm -hmm. and a majority of people get injured because the muscle becomes too strong for right. the connective tissue. And you chose go before show. Yeah. And that was a huge, that was a huge benefit for you. The other thing I like about your situation is, is that your longevity, you know, I, and I think what I saw a lot of people ask when I showed I was going to have you on this thing was, how do you stay motivated? 
Because, you know, I mean, there's, I think there's times when we all get up and go, son of a bitch, we got to go to the gym. There's at least one of those times or a couple of times here, <laughs> and I think people fall into a rut, but me and you have never done that because I think one of the things that kept us from doing that is we started so young, it's our life. It's a lifestyle. So tell me how you feel about that. Uh, I don't know if you ever seen the movie called Wild Guns, or, or, uh, and, and it says in there, you guys are all going to fail. Why are we going to fail? Why are we going to fail? Because you don't test yourself every freaking day. And I love that. And, and I, you and me started this young. Mm -hmm. I started martial arts really young um, because I was getting my ass kicked, not just by my older brothers, but my older sisters were also in the martial arts. Right. So they're drop kicking me. So at a young age, I was raised in this house of power lifters, bodybuilders, martial artists, and I was tested every single day. Mm -hmm. and, and at that age, again, if you do it every single day, it mm -hmm. becomes... Habit. Yeah. And, and it's one of those things that's never gone away. Yeah. And I love the fight. And I realized as I got older and older, I love the fight uh, more than the, the powerlifting meet, more than the cover story or yeah. uh, the bodybuilding show. Um, like gladiators doing that through my 20s, 30s, and 40s. Yeah. The greatest thing in the world was, uh, it was not knowing that I was going out there to fight one guy. It was that I had to fight nine guys a day. Uh -huh. And I'm like, yep. I'm yeah. up for this. As, as a fan, um, what was more fun, hitting somebody with that gigantic Q-tip or shooting like the projectiles at them? Well, it's funny that man, the the the, the gun was usually given to somebody that wasn't uh, athletic as the others, uh -huh. so I never got on that. Nice. But wow. here's the here's the answer to the question. Joust was fun, but it was always too quick for me because uh, well, I, I'd never lost, and yeah. and I just oh. beat the Powerball was fun. Powerball was fun because it's football without pads, yeah. and man, you could get in these guys and just set them up, yeah. and just taking somebody's, head, yeah. you know, anything like that, or or uh, breakthrough and conquer. Anytime you can grab a man and, and manipulate him and throw him around is always a gladiator mentality of fun. Yeah, um, but so I'll tell you this though, it, it's it the biggest difference and what was the most fun was living in the moment of being able to do it relative to being a. So, I, I did it so young. I, I got it when I was 22 years old. Right. The original, where I was Thor. Yep. That went by so fast, and it was so nerve-wracking, and it was so not fun. Yeah. It wasn't, because it was like, I got I to gotta win. I got to win. I got to win. I got to do this. I got to go. It's the next show. What is, what's next? What's next? And I did that in competitions, yeah. in, in powerlifting meets, in bodybuilding. It yeah. didn't matter what I did. Cover of romance books. Great. I'm flying to New York. Okay, I'm in the photo shoot with these beautiful women. Five women in a day, but no, no, I'm already thinking about, okay, next week, what do I got to do? Mm -hmm. And it's like, and wait, it went too quick. When I got Gladiators the second time, that was fun. Yeah. I slowed everything down. Actually, I'm watching the old reruns and watching the, the newer ones, you could see yourself be more relaxed. Like, not, <laughs> not, not athletically relaxed, but you could see that Maybe mental. No, it was. It was more relaxed. Yeah, yeah. it, but it wasn't, like, stressful for you. Yeah, the second time around, I'm, I was smiling, and, and it was the... Uh, and you should always. I mean, a 20-year-old, if, if you're a 40-year-old and you still think like you were when you're 20, you wasted your life. Yep. Uh, and, and when I got it again, or even Battle Dome, uh, yep. when I got these other shows and I was living in the moment and I was coming out going, all right, I get to do this. Uh -huh. It's, you know, and, and I get to enjoy this. Win, lose, or draw. I get I to fight these guys and do it and have fun with it. That's Only nice. spandex is a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a spandex guy, man, but you got to take the good with the bad. Hey, See, you know? my million-dollar idea is they need to have a chain American Gladiator. You know how they have like laser tag and all that stuff? Yeah. You need to have a chain of those. We can go and just beat the crap out of your friends. Are you guys <laughs> are you guys ready for this though? Gladiators is coming back. No shit. Gladiators yeah. is coming back. Dude, that's gonna be brutal. They've already contacted you, possibly. There's a, I don't know. I don't, so. I don't know. You gotta be. I I know <laughs> nothing. Stop nodding. I know nothing. Awesome. Gladiators is coming back. So give me an example of like we, we had talked about this earlier off camera, but who is one of the most impressive people you have ever met as far as strength is concerned in your realm? Wow. If you're a West Coast guy, I, I got my guys here, but who is some guy that you walk in the gym and go, holy fuck, this dude is a berserker? Wow. Uh, man, there's, a, there's, there's, there's some bodybuilders that come in that just uh, – uh, have power, and this is what this is what I hate when people go. Ah, uh, you're strong for a, a bodybuilder. I'm strong for a power lifter. Yeah, you are. You know, you it, it's today. 35 years I've been able to do this these numbers, and I'm more happy 
that I could do it for 35 years where, where there's guys that try to get to those numbers just once in their lifetime for yeah. one meet. Um, and you know me. Yeah. I'm this strong every day. You are. I, I don't try to uh, uh, cycle up in strength and do I, a meet. I honestly, personally, and like I said, I haven't been around a lot of bodybuilders or whatever you want to call it, but I have personally never seen somebody stay as lean as you are and stay that strong. Never seen it. Yeah. And maybe it's happened. You, you can understand it, but it's, but it's that whole blunt force trauma that it just continues to build and yeah. build in my nervous system. But um, there's some strong guys out there. But there's no... Ronnie, Ronnie Coleman is... Was a freak. Ronnie was second level because uh, just the way he played with weights mm -hmm. uh, and, and he still lifted them. Uh, as he got bigger and bigger, you'll notice he lifted them more and more like a bodybuilder uh -huh. relative to his powerlifting years. Right. Um, you know structure. When you're powerlifting and you sit the ass back and you sit into it and boom, boom. He started getting so freaking strong. He just started bodybuilding squat, uh -huh. 815 and, and, and high necks, and close stance. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. Do you think there was anything that he could have done differently or is it just genetic that he his body wore out? Like now he's getting a lot of hips and knees. Because I always get the question with me, like, man, how are your knees and hips going to be when you're 55, you know? You're, you're close to 50. Yeah, yeah. And you're 100%. Yeah. I mean, you walk around perfect. You and Stan walk around great. Yeah. I think of what did you do different, you know, than what those guys did? Do you think some of that's genetic, or do you think he would have had a... I think I did uh, uh, less reps than most. I yeah. think I, uh, I... There was a lot of... I slow down things, and I've really slowed down movements, and, and I find a real enjoyment out of knowing that I can take 500 down into the hole and sit there and then flex out of it not instead of, of it. not instead of bouncing of out of it. Reflex. Right. Yeah. And I love being able to uh, take a squat and, and, and change locations of where it's working as I'm descending and then yeah. push it in. And it's and fun skilled, for me. A skilled guy like me, when I watch you do stuff, I can see you doing that. See, but you, other people, you're an expert. When they see it, they don't, they don't know what I, you're doing. They he's just going slow. I don't get what I he's doing understand. there. I, I know what you're doing. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. Yeah, and what that's are, kept me healthy. And oh, yeah. that's kept the joints healthy, and it's kept the body. Uh, and again, I, your body it, it adapts to the pressure it's put under. Yeah. I've never gone away from it. Yeah. So I know you've flown in, and we want to we want to speed this up, but what are some advice you can give to beginners? So let's say this: there's a 13-year-old just like me and oh, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. And they're sitting down listening to this shit. What, what do you have to say to that, that kid that was us when we were 13? Slow down. Yeah. I, I think, uh, honestly... I would talk to myself and I would say a couple things. I'd say slow down. Uh, you don't need to do everything in the first day. Um, less is more. Yeah. Uh, smarter instead of harder. Yeah. Um, and make it count when you're yeah. in it. If you're doing speed work, it's still the connective and what you're doing and pushing it out. Mm -hmm. Instead of just, uh, you know, when I was a kid, was, I don't care. You're I'm deadlifting it from the ground to the hip regardless of how it looks. Yeah. And I wish I changed uh, a lot of that. First. Yeah, I, I wish I stayed with this. it. My big saying is, it's not what you can do, it's what you can recover from. That's great. Right? That's great. That's you can only, cool. you can only train as hard as you as well as you recover. Yeah. That's it. And and I, and I wish I could say that. I'd yeah. say wear sunblock. I would say slow down. I would yeah. say, um, and I think what diet. Got, yeah. And I think what got you where you were is having that. I ran into kids, even in the ADFPA when I was 13, 14, that stone cold kicked my ass. Way stronger than me, more genetically gifted. I outlasted them. And that's how I got where I was. At 24, there were 10 guys better than me in the world. At 26, there were 6. At 27, there were 3. At 28, there were 0. And I held that as long as I could and then switched to raw and did it all over again. Yep. But the point was is that there were always guys that were immediately better than me. I just knew I had to outlast everybody. And I think your career has been some of the same direction. I, I'm still that 14 year old going, uh, uh, I grew up with dyslexia in, in, in special classes. Uh, and so the one thing I said is I, I will, I had to read everything three to four to five times compared to a kid reading it once. And I put that with everything I do. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that I had with me too, is I had probably some mild form of ADD coming through. No, do you still do. And I still yeah, do. yeah, you still do. But once once I got into college and started studying exercise science, and then they finally let me into the biomechanics master's program, and then I was studying things I liked, and I was training hard, so I was cooling that erratic energy off. I was able to learn, and that's what weights really gave me the most of was not only the self confidence, but the ability to slow down and let things absorb, and realize that if I wanted that six hundred pound raw bench, 
I was going to have to take 15 years to get there because I wasn't going to get it out of the gate. You'll fight every day to be a champion, but no, understand it takes time. Mm -hmm. And well, that's the key point. Going back to that teenager that you were talking about, Matt, that wants to learn how to do this, are there good ways and bad ways to go about learning? <sighs> I, I, the, it, the amount of information out there. Here, here's the thing with today. Um, instead of asking is the first thing. I think today social media is ask first. I see you do something. I'm going to ask you. Mm -hmm. Stop. Go study it. Go attempt something. Uh, obviously, you want to be watching people that are, you know, have done something in a yeah. sense. So I'm watching you. Yeah. I'll watch you squat. Hmm, I don't understand. I'll go tempt it. And then come back and see how it is. Because I, I noticed today it's... That's value. They, 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 I grew up around five guys that I thought were average Joes. Everybody's mom and dad. Uh, everybody's this strong. So it's, it, I, I grew up with a beautiful, ignorant bliss. Mm -hmm. Because I thought Doyle Kennedy, Doug Furness, Jeff Magruder were just the average lifters. I didn't know were these are the strongest people. guys in the freaking world. Yeah. And I'm at 13, 14 going, I can do this and I'll look better than you. Yeah. Which is a beautiful thing, because yeah. there's no ceiling. Yeah, not nearly the level, but in, in a small town in Indiana where I grew up, the guy that taught me to bench was a was a 500 pound bencher at 185 pounds body weight. Jesus. And a set a 722 pound deadlift for 1972. So this, these two guys that taught me to lift were legends in their own area and their own time. And I, I that's something. Saw that and said I could do that. At 13. How old? You're 13. Okay, so this is definitely now. There's there's more of us in common. There's something about growing up at Jesus that Christ. age where you see something that's, you go, okay, this is average Joe, not knowing it's, it's, it's elite. And then believing that, because here's the thing, um, I've been able to stay consistent longer than most mm -hmm. that we know of. I was just doing Generation Iron and they were saying, uh, Sean Ray and I both got on stage in 1983 mm -hmm. and there's nobody still getting on stage except for me. Mm -hmm. um, and regardless of what you think about life and how you train and stuff like that, I'm the same size I was in high school. Mm -hmm. It's about what you believe. Yeah. I don't care if you believe this or that, yeah. but I would rather you believe that's possible. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, being there in that age and you seeing him bench that and deadlift that and, and, and understanding that, and then me seeing these guys, Doyle Kennedy deadlifting right. 900 yeah. and, and going, I can do this without the beard. You know, it's just, you know what I mean? It's yeah. just, you guys don't even know. I don't know if your fans know these names, but look them up, man. Yeah. This is, Jeff McGrew was the first guy at 242 to bench 605. Doug Furness was one of the best. Doug Furness. Dude. probably Dude. one of the best built powerlifters. His ever. legs, 36 inches, and I'm sitting there going, I want legs like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, so it, just growing up with that, it was our ability to believe this is possible. Yep compared to the guy that's at the local gym seeing 315 on the squat and he goes well that's the strongest guy in the gym that's good weight yep. your ceiling's already set and i believe yep. bruce lee is right it there's no ceilings you can we were set up to win yep. at 13 ties to what people other people thought were impossible you like that i like yep. ignorance and bliss yeah. it's a beautiful child yeah. believing that <laughs> santa claus is real um, and I stayed true to that and go, just, yeah. yeah, as we got older, okay, maybe I won't deadlift 900, but I'll do something so badass. Mm -hmm. And I, and I got to 775 for three. Um, and then I competed two months later in a bodybuilding mm -hmm. show. So for me, that was my 900. Yeah. And I think guys like in my position, which are far and few between, but guys in my position, look at a guy like you and realize, okay, maybe I'm this much stronger than you at certain things. But now that I'm working on getting leaner and you're helping me with my diet and I'm throwing ideas back and forth to learn my own path on that. I'm starting to realize your success in being able to do both is so extreme. And that's where I think Thanks. people don't understand is you have, you and Stan are the two most disciplined people in my circle of friends as far as what you eat, when you train. What time do we train? What time do you train over at Gold's? Because I know. <laughs> 4.30. Luckily, <laughs> at Ohio time, it was 7.30. So right, sleep yes, right, right. But You're it just... was, I mean, that that's when I was just like, man, this guy is the real deal. And we lifted together, and I was like, you hung with everything. Thanks, brother. Thank you, put. man. And I'm telling you, that was that was a big eye-opener for me because I feel like I trained my ass off. And I was always the underdog and pushing things up and coming from car accidents and things like that. And uh, that's why I wanted to get you on this because I, I love it, man. No, this, I'm, gl I'm glad we did this. I get glad we got a train, so but I we'll hope. be doing this more. Yeah, for sure. But I just love the similarities that, we, and we didn't. 
I didn't know that you started at 13 and, 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 and you grew up with the same kind of uh, growth I did and people around you. It's the coolest thing. Mm -hmm. Now I can verify this because you are a world record holder. You grew up the same way I did. There is a beautiful a beautifulness to growing up young and believing this is possible. And I, I guess my whole thing about social media and stuff and what I try to put out there, mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to say this honestly, I'm not one of these guys that's, that's out there trying to go, hey, let's be positive and let's do this. Most of the stuff I do is for myself in the mm -hmm. sense of, of just trying to get up every day and fight for it and, and yeah. live the dream. Um, and if that influences people, then that's great. Yeah. Um, if it irritates you, hey, I understand. Yeah. But uh, the possibilities and beliefs and making your dreams come true is a, yeah. it's a beautiful well, thing. I think you have more of an outreach than even your Instagram followers and stuff show. Because if you're touching guys like me that are that are super hardcore and 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 we're teaching other people how to do things at a positive level, that's really what it's all about. I think that's what we stand for. That's what you stand for on the West Coast. That's what we're standing for here in Ohio. And I think that's why we've had such a good connection. Yeah. You know, cause a bromance be, from the start. Yeah. Beautiful. A lot, a lot of touching. A lot, yeah, of a lot of touching. There's nothing yeah. wrong. And I remember skin, I'm, skin. I'm throwing this out there, the coolest thing I'd ever seen. And I came back and used this line that you taught me for like a. The whole year and we were hanging out and your girlfriend had you had a bunch of cronies working out with you and one of those girls were like like bulgaria or something i asked you i said who is that girl and you go yeah she's all right if you're into chicks <laughs> <laughs> and you said it with no smile and walked away from me it was the coolest i thought about that the entire uh, pacific coast highway i couldn't even focus i don't know if you guys got that but that's just maybe you had to be there i don't know you know, but going up the Pacific Coast Highway, literally about to fall off my motorcycle because I'm laughing so hard every 20 minutes after you're into chicks. <laughs> I had so, to throw that in go there. Go get some rest, man. All right. And Much we'll love. see you at the Arnold. Go see you at the Arnold. What booth are you at? 621. We are at uh, Stryker. Me and Mona will be at uh, the Protein Water. And where can we find you at online? You can find me at Mike O'Hearn on anything. Um, yeah. Yeah. From uh, Instagram to Twitter to Facebook. Or 4.30 in the morning at Gold's. Or 4.30, if yeah. And if you guys ever want to train with me, come Gold's Gym, 4.30 in the morning. Yeah, it's Jump a real in. deal. It's a real deal. Pack a lunch. I love it. <laughs> we'll see you later. Peace out.